Hello viewers, welcome to Regina Aura. For this tutorial section, we are going to be installing um, Oracle 11G Release 2 on our Oracle Linux 6 server. Okay, so this part here, it's going to be um, our installation guide uh, as I take you step by step through this installation. And then um, I'm working directly under the roots. Okay, so I'm going to be working like from here to here. Okay. Um, before this installation, I had already downloaded um, my files from my Oracle site. Okay, so if you've not done that, you could do that now or you do that after the setup, whichever one is okay. Okay, now um, these are um, packages that um, all of this from here to here, they are all packages that need to be checked um, while you're installing your Oracle Linux 6. You can go over my previous video you would see how to do that here so i'm now assuming that you have all of these packages checked in and then i'll move to the next step now the next part of this installation is actually where i'm going to be starting from knowing that i've done the other part before now is for us to edit the etc slash host file okay so i'm just going to have that here and um file we are supposed to include our um, IP address and then our fully qualified host name and then uh, the machine name also now okay for my host name I have um, this is my host name and um, this is my machine name okay so I'm just going to copy this and then um, paste it here Great. let's see Okay, the next path here is for us to amend the um, cctl.com file. So I'm just going to still use the VI, okay? Um, this kind of makes our installation a bit faster rather than doing that and then paste that here. Okay, now this is the path where we need to add all of the sizes to this file. Okay, um, most of the times you might want to amend what you already have or you might want to just um, add it at the end of it. So for this installation, I'm just going to add what I have here because I don't want to amend. So quite easier for me that way. So I'm just going to say don't create. Okay, now um, after that part, um, this is the part where we... Um, need to um, save um, what we just added okay so it's important to save it so to save that I'm just going to run this the system command to save our parameters okay um, this um, path this path here is for us to add the security limit um, dot um, com file Okay, now this part um, does not give us the um, choice to amend. We have to add it. So I'm just going to comment there. Mm -hmm. um, add it for one. Like that. Down. Save and create that. Okay, so the next part is for IOM installation. Um, okay, um, we are going to be manually installing all of these packages. Now, all of these packages are needed um, for um, 11G to function properly. So that means that we have to have all these packages installed. Okay, so um, I'm going to have to uh, repeat directly from our ISO file. Okay, so I'll just um, create the configuration and then we'll see how that works already so that you know what I'm doing. Okay, so the first thing is that um, I'm going to make a directory. I'm going to make a directory called um, media slash CD-ROM. I'm going to be mounting my ISO file into this directory I just created now. Next um, path there is to mount into the directory that we just created. Okay, we are mounting the ISO file. So this is my ISO file into the directory that we just created. So 
so it's mounted and that's why you have this pop-up here so okay um the next thing is um for us to create a file called dvd repo um if we have to go to this directory first so i'm just going to copy that and then to the directory Now, um, normally um, on this directory, we do not have this file. We only have for the public yum. That means if we wanted to aut automate this process. Okay, so um, what we need to do right now is to paste in the base URL. Okay, in what I have here, the most um, important thing, or should I say the most valid thing here, is your base URL. You have to ensure that your base URL is um, pointing to the directory where you mounted your ISO file. Now that uh, next is for me to import the RPM GPG key. Okay, so I'm just going to import that. Take note that we're still working from where we mounted our ISO file. And um, the next thing is for us to install all of those packages. So I'm just going to do a test run with this, and um, you can when. Okay, so you can see this package is already installed um that's what we're saying nothing to do so this is how it works um this is um constant and this um can be changed depending on the package that you want to install okay so i think um you know how that goes i'm just going to quickly copy all of this here to install all these packages as fast as i can okay so that's like my easy way of um doing that so that i don't have to do it over and over again okay while we're waiting for my packages to be installed don't forget to subscribe to my channel and you can visit my blog to get the um, text file for this installation and um, go step by step the way i'm doing it right now okay so all my packages are installed wow okay so i'll clear that so the next step is for us to create users and group okay some of the groups um, already exist that's good for us secondly is um, for us to add our user oracle and then so i'm just going to do that so wow oracle user already exists and then we'll go on and give you the password then that will be oracle my password thank you okay um, the next path here is to edit our security limit um, file so I'm just going to go over to this file here okay so what we are supposed to do is to change this into this okay into what we have here so I'm just going to copy that this away okay so you just paste that here so next part here is for us to set our security Linux config file to permissive. So I'm just going to copy it. Okay. Now when we are done with um, editing this um, SLinux config file. You can either restart your machine or you can run this um, system force um, permissive command to help reset that. Okay. So just going to paste this here. Okay. Um, the next part is for us to disable Linux firewall if we have it enabled. So, okay, that's done. So, okay, so this part here is for us to make directories and change the directory permission to Oracle and uninstall as a group. So, I'm just going to copy this the way it is and then quickly make that directory. Next path is for us to edit our bash um, profile file connected as Oracle to do the many steps before we start installation. Okay, I'm going to add the comments um, added for Oracle. Okay. 
the path for the oracle host name don't forget that it has to carry your own host name and um, your db unique name also you can have that carry your database unique name that you want to have and i, I think okay that will be it so, So lastly, it is for us to unzip our files that we've downloaded. So um, I already have my files here. So you can see them. So I can just um, um, excuse this since we're not using it and then try to expand this one. One installer. Okay, so the installer is up. So let's just run through this um, few installation steps. But I'm going to uncheck this part, and um, cause of course it's a demo um, tutorial. So I'm just going to have that there. Yes, and um, okay, this part also I'm going to have to skip. Um, software updates also for obvious reasons. This part uh, we need to select um, our installation option. I'm going to leave it at create and configure the database. Okay, this path um, is for us to select the system class. I'm okay with the um, desktop class from full database installation and then basic configuration. Okay, so from the, this path, Oracle database, software location, and database file lo location that's default because we already made this directory and this corresponds well. And um, okay, I'm going to give it the password yeah. uh, don't worry it's my password it's okay okay now this part is to create inventory I'm going to leave also this part the way it is okay Okay, um, our database configuration assistant is done. Okay, so we can see our global database name and then we can see our SID. Okay, um, we can also see, well, most importantly, the database control URL, which is this. Okay, that's Okay, so our installation was successful. You can see the Enterprise Manager Control URL. This brings us to the end of our installation. I hope that this installation section was straightforward for you. Um, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Um, thank you so much for viewing.